the point at which we prove to you that we make the most changing guitar we think we want this to be. Okay, I'm going to do a few things in this speech. Um, first of all, I'm going to give two. Oh, sorry, I'm going to give two points. Um, but first of all, I want to give a quick characterization, characterization about what guitars and synths are. <coughs> first of all, what would a car, guitar themselves want the game in the World Cup? Quite simply, we think it's like money, growth, tourism, things like that. Quite intuitive. The country wants to benefit themselves, right? Fair enough. Like we get this through, like obviously the World Cup makes the most of money through tourism, through money, like all things like that. I think that's fairly intuitive. Uh, they want to spend as much time. Okay. So, okay. First point about why not going then forces them to make change. Okay. What's the problem here? So by going to Qatar and by having all these countries go into Qatar, it makes them lots of money, right? All this tells Qatar is that we don't need to change because we're getting all this money, right? Because like at the point at which we don't go and don't get the money, we think we make change, right? Okay. So. <laughs> Why again? Like they're, they're happy because they're making money. They have no actual incentive to make change, whether it's right or wrong, whether they're criticized or not. I think the only thing that actually can make change here is by not going, right? Okay. So how does not going fix it, right? It tells Qatar that what they're doing, like first of all, isn't okay on a basic level. But the only way that they're actually going to make money, they're going to grow, it's going to bend them to themselves, is if like they stop the human rights abuses. If we tell them like we're not going to go until you stop the human rights abuses, until we until they fix the problems in the country. That's the only way um, for them to like, it's the only way for us to go. And that's the direct incentive for them to change. That's the only way that, if we tell them it's like the only way they're going to be able to host more World Cups or like have the players go in the first place, I think like, you know, there's a massive incentive for them to change. Also, the motion doesn't specify like how many countries are going or what country, but I think obviously the more the better. And it's generally a boycott. So I think it's like a shun, a fair to assume there's going to be like a lot of places to go. I think also like, at the point at which like a massive group of countries don't go, or like all of the countries in the world cup don't go, that's like a massive incentive for them, a massive loss in money, and yeah, things like that. Okay. Do you like? Oh uh, yeah. Do you not think the financial impact is a lot more detrimental to the people of Qatar, not just the government? I think the point here is that like we're not going to give them the financial benefits, right? By not going, we're not giving them the financial benefits, right? And the only way that we're going to go and give them financial benefits is if they change and they make actually make change, right? That's the whole point of the boycott, right? Okay, so what are the impacts of this? Well, generally, like, we think if we get to the point where either we don't go up and Qatar don't get all this money, right? Or the only thing they're forced to do is that the human rights abuses stop, they fix what they're doing, and then we can come, right? Which is the, which we think is likely to happen if they actually desperately want the world cut, right? We think this is massive because it actually fixes the problem, right? Okay. Second point about why this is like the best stage for criticism, right? Okay. So what's the problem here? I think by not going, it creates must, like, much less controversy, much less discussion. Sorry, by going, it creates much less controversy, much less discussion around attention, right? Why? It's because it's not as big as a news story, right? The World Cup happens like every four years. Schedule it happening isn't really a big deal. It's not some. Well, it's a big deal, but it's not like something that like is unique from all other ones, right? By actually not going, it's something that's almost never happened in all of history. It creates a much bigger news story, much bigger um, conversation, things like that, right? So why does this help, right? Okay, so as I said, it creates a much bigger news story, and therefore it reaches more people, it creates more discussion, and therefore it leads to more criticism, right? So we've already told you about the impacts about why they actually are going to make worse make change. On top of this, we tell you about the criticism that they receive, right? We think also because we um, don't like go, we also don't have like any like benefit from them, so we don't have any reason not to criticize them. For example, like there's a whole thing about like like Muslims in China were being like. Um, Abused and like things like that, and oppressed. But the West, so I covered up a little bit because they're making so much money from it and making so much. They have, China has so much investment in us. So by criticizing them, we can't really, um, we can't really criticize them because they have, we have so much investment in them, right? By not going to Qatar, we don't end up having investment in them, and so we're free to criticize them whoever we want. Okay. So what is the comparative here? Okay. On their side, Qatar makes money. If they go, regardless of what happens, Qatar makes money. I think that is inevitable, right? That is Qatar's main incentive. And so I think that tells them that like they don't like at that point. I think they don't care. They, they, um, yeah, they, they don't care if they're making because they're getting what they want to get money. On our side, we tell you that nobody's going to go to the World Cup if they don't make change. If they're able to force them to make change, as I've said so many times, we think we, think we have the biggest form of like, criticism, at the point where we create the most controversy, controversy and most discussion, we at least have more pushback in that form. So we think, why do we win? Well, generally, we think we win on the key fact that we see the most pushback against guitar and the most likely to make change. Thank you.
that this debate should be judged on who sees the best outcome for human rights abuses while still taking into consideration the people of Qatar. We think that all these issues we solve on opium petitions. Firstly, I'll be doing some rebuttal in my speech, then I'll move on to my main point in the minute. Um, we heard two main points from the first speaker. One about um, Qatar's incentives, and a second one about how boycotts create can, can, uh, more attention. So to address the first one, about incentives. We think that like there are alternative methods to incentivize Qatar to change. Yes, money is a big factor, but um, the incentive of Qatar is to like continue to create money in the future. I'll we'll explain why that doesn't happen under their side of the house. Of course, and, and then on to the second point about how these boycotts create more attention. We think that like one, it creates negative attention from the fans. Um, of football because they don't get to watch the football. It creates negative attention surrounding like the actual cause and the actual issues at hand um, and the people um, being taken advantage of and leads to like a group of people just angry and not caring about it. We think two my permission. the um no thank you. Two, the World Cup is broadcast globally. We think making movements there and making statements there has effects over the entire world. Um, and all the people that see it, it's not likely that like you haven't seen any clip from like the World Cup, like everyone sees it. By making statements there, we're more likely to get change. change. Yes, please. Do you not think that we see more change if there's like, this massive global movement that really turns up? I'll, I'll explain why that isn't true in a second. So we think we have a burden in this debate, and that's to explain why it's justified to still go while taking into account these like human rights abuses. Um, so what is the problem of this motion? We think that like, yes. The stuff happening in Qatar is bad, but the boycott isn't the thing that's going to solve this. So why is this true? We think that like, boycotts are essentially avoiding the issue. If the country isn't in the World Cup, it's not likely that like why they left is the important issue globally. Sure, it has like meaning within that country, but we think it will like die down quickly when people realise they can like um, no longer care that football isn't being played. We think that at the end of the day, this is what like creates the most like passion for people um, is that they are getting to watch football and that's like having negative effects on them. Um, we also think it like negatively impacts the people of Qatar, but my partner will go more to um, talk about that in her speech. So why is this important? We think that like we need to see like the good of alternative me methods. We have two ways to do this. One is making political statements there. As I said, the World Cup is all over TV, it's all over the world. If a footballer comes into the pitch wearing a pride flag, for instance, like the whole world is seeing it and seeing the message that it spreads. The World Cup doesn't act, happen often, it's like every four years. No, thank you. We think that it's like, this is the perfect opportunity to make this statement to be broadcast over the whole world and to like communicate this message. Um, an example of this is Lewis Hamilton wore a, um, a helmet in like a racing competition that was like for Pride for like LGBTQ plus people. It was making a positive statement while still being able to like participate in the competition. Point of information. No, thank you. We think that a second way to um, solve this is through like media. Lots of issues are tackled through the media, whether it's like online, <coughs> in the news resources, etc. We think like by boy, we can still um, be discovered. Ah, discouraging of the Qatar government's actions by reporting more about it and bringing attention to it while we're there. Point of information. Sure. Um, does the speaker not realise that all of the coverage is contained solely to football stadiums and commentary No, we should feel like we can still see. No, I'm no. We think we can still see um, a lot of <laughs> uh, negative things happening in, in Qatar. I'll explain in a second about that. We think that, like, it, this is exactly what we're saying. It means we can also show the conditions in Qatar um, and the impacts um, that are happening to the vulnerable people in Qatar. Um, an example of this is the the fact that like women had to be wearing like appropriate dress to be um, in the stadium. We wouldn't know this if we weren't there. But like important issues like that are the things that like need to be addressed and can only be addressed by being there. So um, what are the impacts of this? We think that like we're still seeing change in guitar. Pressure can be put on them through the media to change their ways or through um, social movements there. But the like guitar isn't going to be happy that they're getting all this negative attention from all these countries because it means they're going to have like less tourists in the future that aren't supportive of them. This leads to them getting less money, which, as um, government already said, incentivizes them 
plants to want to do this. They want to secure tourists by reframing their reputation and by telling people. So why do we win? Well, we have to fulfill our burden of addressing human rights issues and explain why they are better and tackled under this side of the house and how media attention and uh, social movements there make the most change globally. Thank you. Qatar's human rights abuses are horrendous. We cannot support or allow this by attending the 2022 FIFA World Cup. I'm going to do three things in this, in this speech. I'm going to first of all rebuild Luke's case and then prove why he feels like substantive is the, the best material in this debate. I'm going to offer some rebuttal to the first opposition speaker and I'm going to raise one new point of like why gold makes it seem acceptable and like the whole theme of like immorality. First of all, like to rebuild, like, to rebuild Luke's case. Luke said that like, not going forces Qatar to make change. And um, like he told us like all these reasons, like if people don't go, like Qatar only interested in money, like if people don't go and not get things money, this is what's going to make, make them change, and this is what's going to lead to, to change. From the first opposition speaker, like all we hear from this is like there's other methods for Qatar to change, but we don't necessarily hear specific methods of how they can change. Um, they also said that boycotts aren't going to solve this, but like we don't hear any other like methods that are going to help. Um, solve this problem, so we think that like, we can just take this point and we don't hear any like, material on how to solve it. Um, now we're going to take my rebuttal for the um, opposition. So they stated that it makes more change if people go and make political statements there because it's being covered in the World Cup. This would be the case, but like, unfortunately, Qatar covering things up like this, like Qatari police officers like taking away LGBTQ items um, from people, so, like they're unable to make change because people are like. It'd be good if they were able to make change, but the Qatari police, like, they're so strict and they enforce this, so they're unable to make change at the point where like, they're taking away people's like items that are like supporting LGBTQ. So unfortunately, they're not able to like promote this and make change. Also, he stated it's like you can still criticize the World Cup from Qatar. Like, yes, this is all like very well and good. Like, you can criticize Qatar, but C Qatar have going back to what Luke was saying. Qatar will have no real reason to change if like you're still giving them money and. Um, you and like the only yes. What they want to change if they know like they won't be getting tourists in the future because of their bad rights. But what's what's making them think that like they're not going to get like tourists in the future? Because like they've been told that it's like they can't do this like terrible stuff and like they're violating human rights, but like yeah, they're still they were still able to like host the World Cup. It's like it's again to put a profit, it's more later in like the case. But it's like it's more to the point where like the rest of the world is like saying we can't do that as bad, but they're still letting them do things like host the World Cup and make huge profit margins. So we don't think like this entire world. So now on to like my main point about like how going going to the World Cup and like supporting it and or attending the World Cup makes it seem acceptable. So like if the players and teams and fans all go to the World Cup, like they're not incentivizing the things need to change. Like don't think the more aspects, not just money, like they're not they're like not doing anything like proves like not just on the money basis, but on like a human rights basis, and like they're not incentivizing things to change when it comes to like the people at hand, which is like the migrant workers that passed away. Like building these stadiums, like the, the horrible, like horrendous conditions for like women in Qatar. Um, so like this also like makes other countries that do immoral things like think it's okay to do things such as like violate human rights or like not giving women the rights that they deserve. Because of, like Qatar is like, an example of like a country like, where people experience like discrimination and like abuse, and it's like what's stopping other countries from doing this, like from continuing this on if they're in, if Qatar like to do it. And the rest of the world lets them get away with it, what's stopping them from continuing and like making it worse? Like we live like this obviously cannot happen. Like we live in a world of change. Like we want to improve things such as human rights and by like we only see this happening if like boycott things and like stop things like this from happening. So like a lot of the World Cup stadiums like were built by migrant workers. Like the majority of like the stuff in Qatar is like just being put up for the World Cup and like like and these work migrant workers have like have been extremely overworked and underpaid. It's like resulted in a lot of death. And this is obviously like, an extremely terrible thing. Like human life is incredibly valuable. Um, and like no amount of like, like the only way we can see change is if we actually go in. And I'll keep repeating.
it must have probably only see change of the head action by not going at all with precise movement for me to use physical change. Um, and then we also think it's like hypocritical for these countries going to like critica criticize and campaign about the like Qatar 22, 2022 World Cup, like when they're still going, like they're still benef benefiting from it and like partaking in like more along like the country that wins the World Cup, they get like lots of money. And it's like to the point where like Qatar are doing bad things and like the media and all these other countries are criticizing them, but yeah, they're still going, like they're still benefiting from it. So like it's, it's hypocritical and not fair, like for them to do this. So like, what does my point prove? So a few things like it just proves that like all of this is like morally wrong and like regardless of regardless of the like, Qatar profiting from the West, it's like it's simply morally wrong and incorrect. And like regardless of all of this, look substantive material on why like why we see the most change in Winter's us today. Thank you. So my, next, my speech is going to be about like the economic dependency that the World Cup has on that Qatar has on the World Cup. But I'm going to start my speech off with some rebuilding of my partner's points and some rebuttal. So we heard from the second speaker about how like we've related no alternatives to boycott. Like we think this is kind of like a clear mess of my partner's point about personal statements about how, how actual um emotion emotionally affected comments from like the athletes and from like the actual people who went to Qatar and experienced it are a lot more like persuasive to people. Um, than just like general avoidance of the problem and of like the issue. So we think that like even if they aren't allowed to bring like things that support like LGBT rights or like women or things like that into Qatar, like they still have the opportunity to like share their experiences in Qatar and like their own experience with like how the human rights issues like, affected them or how they like witness these human rights issues and in interviews or on social media. Like these are people with big platforms. Like these athletes are typically really big role models to like young men specifically, you know, people who are most encouraged to get into football. I think this can be like a really good thing for like just to like spread more awareness about yeah. this due to their platform. So thank you. We heard from the Prime Minister a lot about so now it's just rebuttal. We heard a lot from the Prime Minister about how like bigger conversations will be started. But like, we just simply do not think this is true. As Emma said, like this detachment and this disengagement from the World Cup as you're not as invested in like the actual teams playing is like far less likely for like people to um actually be inspired to research Qatar and to research the human rights issues yeah. on their own. No, thank you. And so like we think that by um avoiding the World Cup, we're simply just ignoring these issues and sweeping them under the rug and going, hey, it's not our thing to deal with because we aren't involved in it. So like we think that this is just like not the best way to go about this and we've provided you with other alternatives that we can do. Wait, so I encourage people to be more edu educated on it. Yes. Do you not think countries going to like the Qatar World Cup Well, I think that's kind of debatable, really. Um, I think that's kind of like um, an objective point of view. Like, obviously, we think it's bad that Qatar and like competition so largely of this, but my main point is going to be about how it's not like the Qatar government and the people who are making these choices who are like have this money incentive. So, like, we think, yeah. So we just don't really think that is like, the most relevant point in the debate. So we also heard a lot about how. Um, Qatar's main incentive is money, but we think this is in direct contrast to my speech, so I'm going to rebut be rebutting this throughout the speech. Um, so, first of all, um, my main point is obviously about economic dependency. If you're expecting a large tourism boost from the World Cup, from big sporting events like this, like small companies and small businesses will be preparing for this. They'll be investing money into things that can like, be related back to the World Cup. Like, you're more likely to sell a football if someone's playing for the World Cup than you are like, just on like the kind of day to day life. So we think that like by boycotting Qatar, we're directly taking money from these small businesses. So like, how do we know that these businesses Sorry. will be preparing for it? No, thank you. So like, we think it's kind of just like common sense. Like, if some, if you're like expecting this large tourism, it's like this large, really broadcasted event. Like, chances are like these companies will be like 
knowing that tourists will need somewhere to stay, they'll need somewhere to eat, and they'll want to go do touristy things like get matching postcards or bracelets for their friends. So like we think that like a lot of money from these small businesses will be like put into these. Not that this is not just taking money away from the government, from the people who are making these choices, but from the actual people of Qatar who are just trying to pay their bills, feed their family, and be able to do nice things Plenty. that like government is just taking away from them. No thank you. Um, because like they assume that they have some sort of direct say in what's actually going on. Like we think they only have like this kind of say to an extent. Like they can only do so much. It's actually the government who needs to make these choices. So while there is like a large incentive from the government to make money, we think that it's a lot more damaging on the actual people of Qatar who and the people we should be focusing on. Um, which makes them so much like a vulnerable actor in the space. So like for some overall win, like on like said government, we see like more damaging impact on like Qatari owned businesses and Qatari business owners. We see less attention drawn to the situation as people don't care about situations that don't involve them. I know I would have been watching the World Cup if it was some country that I had no personal connection to just playing in it, I wouldn't be as engaged about what's actually going on than I was if Scotland or England or anywhere like that was playing. So we see like just generally less attention brought to it, whereas on side opposition we have like a much better chance for Qatar business owners to make more money due to the tourism and furthering the economy of less developed countries like Qatar, um, and just more attention brought as people are more engaged in what their problems up to over others. So like we think that the global impacts go much further on our side of the house and just some shallow saviour complex view of not being involved in sweeping everything under the cover um, that we see on side government. So for all these reasons I'm ready to oppose. Thank you. mentioned that having the World Cup would actually bring more attention to uh, the human rights abuses going on in Qatar. However, all the TV focuses on when the game's actually playing is the game itself. All you're going to see is people scoring goals, people getting excited, the crowds going wild. You're not actually going to see any of the behind the scenes what actually went into it. The blood, sweat and tears of the people of Qatar who <coughs> were forced to do this for the money. You're also worried about the group of people angry about football being cancelled. That point was mentioned earlier. However, I can almost assure you that there are greater numbers of people who are worried about the human rights abuse and the women's rights abuse which are actually going on. And I think the rage felt by them is far more than anything you could worry about than a group of football fans complaining that the World Cup has been cancelled. No thanks. <coughs> It was also said that you could help people um, using the money that came in from the World Cup. However, the construction of the stadium costed an enormous amount of money. So instead of making the world, uh, building the stadium for the World Cup, you can instead invest this money into the actual people themselves. Instead of taking this roundabout route of building a stadium, having a World Cup, and then using the money, you, you, can, just, no, thanks. you can just actually use it themselves. And what I'd also like to say is that um, you can actually experience and understand the rights of use without participating in the World Cup. There are lots of claims about human rights of use which have gone into the construction of them. So the thing is, by trying to understand them and empathise and make your point across, if you're going to the World Cup, it's just hypocritical. You're trying to condemn the human rights abuse while endorsing it at the same time. It makes no sense, it's completely inane. Now, I'd like to start off by asking what actually is sports? It involves pushing people to its limits, but it's also more about than that. It's about teamwork, camaraderie, and people coming together. It's about sportsmanship. How can any of these values be maintained when you're looking at stadiums and sporting events hosted by building upon the backs of underpaid workers and human rights abuse. 
The morality of it is simply... Do I? Yes, please. What do human rights abuses be cared about less if no one is there to actually report on them and show what it's like in that country? I don't think it's that they'd be cared about less, but I think it's that they have less of an opportunity to actually have to. Because the whole thing about the World Cup is Qatar is feeling the pressure. They need to have the stadiums built, they, need, they don't have much money to spend on it, and the entire world is looking at them. So they want it to be good, they want it to show off. And with that comes a limited budget. So of course there's going to be underpaid life. They can't suddenly construct huge stadiums with limited amount of money. So I suppose the main thing that I want to say is that there is a certain principle which we as human beings have to maintain. What we've achieved over the last hundreds of years when it comes to human rights is remarkable. And what we're doing by endorsing the World Cup is just completely going back on them. We're spitting in all the faces of the people that have come before and actually changed society to what it is at the moment. It's completely yeah. hypocritical. No thanks. It's completely hypocritical. As the suffragette said, it's deeds, not words, so that actually count. You can pay, let's have this, all you want, um, but without tangible action, there's nothing that's going to actually get done. The stadiums have only been built for the World Cup. Does that not just seem kind of pointless? There are thousands of stadiums across the world that could be used. We don't need them specifically built for this. We don't need to spend enormous amounts of money. We don't need to put risk people's lives. We don't need to underpay them just for this. There's far more opportunities elsewhere. I suppose what I want to say today is that this isn't just a debate about questionable work ethics or underpaid workers. It's about the very essence of humanity and what it actually means to have a moral code. You can say all you like, but if you don't stand by your viewpoints, then they mean absolutely nothing. And that's all you're doing by saying that you'll go to the World Cup. You're spitting on everything that you've said up till now. So ladies and gentlemen, for the reasons I've outlined above, I beg you to sign into the side.
the thing, but like, they gave more analysis on why this is. So we're going to see like not that many countries kind of, like, are actually going to boycott. Because like, some countries, will, like, they only really care about people. They'll go just to pay. They're not really looking at like, the wider issue of it. So they're just going to come anyway. But I think like, some countries may just not see the issue in going. Like, they may have like, similar beliefs or just something like it's like that big of a deal. So we think there will still be like a significant amount of countries that will be going, meaning like, the world no, thank you. You know, like the world cup will still be able to go. Not going makes less of an impact than like going and raising awareness. Because by not going, we're just ignoring the issues, which means there will be no change made. So I'll go to my second point now about why raising awareness in Qatar is better than raising awareness outside of Qatar. So like I've got like three reasons for this. Well, firstly, we get like an insight into the country. We wouldn't see like what the country truly is if we don't have people going there to like experience it, if we don't have like people <coughs> documenting it. Everyone can see the country if we go. They will hear news from other people. They will see documentaries from here in the future. They're gonna actually see what Qatar is like. They're gonna get an insight into the country and then know why we should change. But certainly there'll be more coverage in Qatar but, like that like proposition aren't gonna get like other like news things that aren't gonna cover. People have to like see things to believe things. People don't automatically just take people's words for it. And like we accept that like, we will get some coverage by not going, but like we get more because like God is also like assuming that like everyone, you know, thank you, is gonna know about like Qatar's human right abuses. But like we think like a lot of people might not, and we need to actually like, show them this, and by going we show them this. And like by going like we are like there's gonna be more people talking about Qatar because it's like we don't go. Yes, there's gonna be like on the news, but like, I talked about like oh like big thing that like, the UK went to Qatar. But then like there's gonna be no mention after that. If we go, there'll be news like from Qatar throughout the whole of the World Cup because there's gonna be people in our country there. There's gonna be like supporters and the like, players there. No thank you. So there's gonna be like more coverage for like a longer period of time, which means like more people are likely to see it. And then like. Thirdly, like criticism, like people will get angry at, at, at Qatar if like, they see the proper treatment. Like, I know, like the government says, like they can't, like they find if you're like gay, but like you can't show it or you will get arrested. So this is obviously gonna make people angry, but we wouldn't have known that if like we didn't go. And so like these strict rules, we only know about because like we went, we will only know it if we go. Like it's not, we don't just think like government sending gay people, we think like everyone. So like, what do we see on both sides of the side? But on the side government, we're just seeing like obviously angry football fans because they're not going to be getting like the World Cup. But like nothing else really happens. Like there won't be any change. The World Cup will still continue and there'll be little awareness raised to the actual real issues here. On our side, we're seeing like more awareness because like, we're seeing people getting like real life experiences of this and being able to share this with everyone else. We're seeing like and this means there'll be like a more chance of Qatar actually changing since it's like better media coverage as well. So why we, do we win this debate? Like we take a vote opening opposition because like they mentioned like some of the stuff we said, but we go to like further analysis to like prove the points and like why this happened. And we proved why like boycotting won't actually give the big impact like the government says and like why raising awareness is better while we're in Qatar and not in Qatar. Thank you. Thank you. Do not really buy into their idea of yes, and this is an important idea throughout. I think 
Um, so the opposition liked to make the claim again and again that what was going to happen was more attention would be brought, more attention would be brought because you know people would be there, we'd get different perspectives. However, I think this runs into a couple of issues very quickly. First of all, there's the no thank you. Uh, first of all, there's the very naive belief that somehow Qatar are going to be displaying the worst excesses of their regime on show for all the tourists who are coming over at, uh, to go to the World Cup. They're going to be showing them, it's going to be on display. We believe that's not true, we know what the regime is like, it's going to whitewash <coughs> and make it appear like it's a sort of sanitized place. And second of all, we believe that the controversy, this is what uh, First Proposition covered quite nicely, the idea that um, the idea that the publicity would come about anyway by the boycott happening because it's such. Uh, yes, please. Why are you more like Chris Blessington? Neymar are an anonymous reporter. Uh, yes, but the point is that all that Neymar is doing is. Well, yes, exactly. Your point. Your your point still proves mine because, as 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 you brought up, Neymar and all these footballers making statements only has an impact on a Western audience. However, if Qatar do not get any people coming to the World Cup at all because of a boycott then there is financial reason to change. The Qatari nation itself is affected. Whilst we believe that this idea that statements from the Westerners going over there and then coming back, or statements from footballers, that only has an impact in the West. That is not giving any tangible reason for Qatar to change, which we on side proposition provide, which is namely a complete boycott. As my partner Jamie said, deeds not words. We believe that all these words from the footballers, the lip service that they can pay is very nice, but it's to a very concentrated audience. Our, our, the, out, the, 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 the outreach that we have expands far, far, far further. And, right. Yes, please. The whole world watches the World Cup. Our statements there are not still impactful over the whole world. But again, you're missing the point because that statement is only applicable to the rest of the world. Whilst we're not looking for the rest of the world to change, we're not interested if the English footballers can make the point that, say, forcing women to wear a certain dress code is bad. What we're interested about is seeing women no longer have to adhere to the dress code. And we believe that it's only possible for this to come about under side proposition instead of the empty words and lip service that side opposition are offering. And so we also believe that um, they, that we believe that um, sort of the idea that this, the, the, the very fact that the World Cup has to go ahead there in the first place when 6,000 migrant workers died, any sort of like moral argument that could come about from the idea that we should then go there to support small businesses is completely negated by the government's own treatment of their own people. You know, that, that, that's abhorrent and there's not really the idea that it's a savior complex to not go to a country. We see the savior complex as lying entirely with the side who suggest it is more immoral to not go and spend money in small businesses than boycott a regime that has killed 6,000 of its own people? Come on, that is just, that, that, that does not really um, equate. And we believe that really, well, we, we've already stated really why the proposition wins over a side opposition. And the reason that um, the second uh, proposition, Jamie and I win over the opening government is because we have brought up the idea of a sort of moral principle that we are not willing to sacrifice. The idea that even if one team refuses not to go, this is a morally superior thing to do than going and endorsing a regime. Ultimately, I think it can be summed up quite simply in the idea, is participating, is participating in the fruits of slave labor morally wrong? Yes, we do believe it is. We do not believe that it can be justified or that committing that wrong can be used to somehow justify and intangible ideas about promoting awareness with a concentration only in a very small strata of nations. Thank you very much, and we beg you to propose this.
everyone's attention to like the country that did boycott and we need like the most countries to boycott to actually make a change like if we don't have like a significant number of countries boycotting then like it won't make that much of a difference to Qatar like they'll still have all of these profits um, and then secondly she also raised the point that like raising awareness in Qatar is be better than raising awareness outside of Qatar so like she raised the, so the two reasons that we see this to be true is that first of all like we're in the country we're seeing Qatar we're seeing how they're doing things and we actually get to like make specific like judgments about them there and secondly we have more coverage because we're there because so this raises more discussion thank you which means that more people are talking about it so moving on to my rebuttal so first of all so opening government so um first point i'm going to rebut is how the main point like by not going it forces them to make change like Qatar will have an incentive to make change we think that like not going like give them, gives them like it okay yes it like it does give them like some incentive but like we don't think that like um if only like, a very small number of countries don't go like they still will have like this profit margin they won't have as much incentive because like they won't Perfection. they won't change like their laws they won't change like their beliefs they won't change something that is like so like embedded into like their system just because some countries have pulled out of like the world cup we don't see that to be true secondly it was like they're getting money they don't care no thank you like they're getting money they don't care so and we see that like if some countries don't go like um like they still like will get like money like we people still bought like tickets and everything like um, and we also see like like i said before like these views and these laws are like deeply like into like qatar's like uh, system so we see like they won't have any changes because some countries will decide not to go to um to the world cup i've also said like boycotts will like create a lot of tension um so like first like, we're going to, i'm going to tell you two reasons why not first of all the fans the fans are just going to be angry at the country like um just like isn't going, it won't really create much attention for Qatar specifically. The fans will just be angry about the country not going. It won't create much. No, thank you. It won't create what create like much actual like um like in the minds of like the fans. It won't really be like oh we're not going because of the like, human rights. This is all being more like oh my country is not playing in the World Cup. And um we see like the fans being one of the, like, the most like one of the biggest actors in like, this debate. And like secondly, like as an example, like if like we did the call, then like yes it may be covered a bit like my partner said but it won't be covered as much as if we go and we actually get like a world like we actually get like the world actually like, watching us say things and making like, political statements and then like second Barbie. speaker started saying that like countries um may like adopt views like Qatar like the sexism the homophobia um because like they see it as like a fine thing <coughs> And then, but then they also raise the point that they think all countries will go. But we think if countries have like an incentive to like actually change their views to be like Qatar, they still will go to Qatar and actually play the game. So we think that doesn't really stand. Um, then in closing government, we see that like they raise the point of like um, we see like bad things like and because like it's just like football coverage and not like actually coverage for Qatar. But we think that like being in Qatar will raise more attention, not necessarily saying that like every single second of media attention will be on like their human rights abuses. Um, but like it does start yeah. like a discussion, and if we go, there will be more coverage, as my partner has said. And then if it was also said, like if one country like doesn't go, like it still shows like good morals and like good intentions, and like this could so Qatar will have an incentive to change. And we think that like it, yes, it may create like some media like coverage and like it may create like some like discussion, but we think it's like it's not as much as like actually going and actually raising as much awareness as we could and actually getting such a world view. So to go over why we win the debate. So in the state government, we see like that nothing really changes in Qatar because they're getting a little awareness. That not all countries will boycott, so it won't really make that much of a difference. And at, we'll just see like most of the angry football fans who aren't really paying attention to the human rights abuses, but more like my team isn't going to the Qatar to the World Cup. I am so angry. But on opposition, we see like more awareness. We see a better chance of Qatar changing. We're seeing better media coverage. There's going to be more discussions between people. <coughs> That's why we're in the debate. Thank you.